Welcome to a very special episode of NFT Talk where I interview Bry DeSanto. That's right, the one and only at Bry DeSanto from Twitter. We talk about Wolf Game primarily, but he also gives some amazing tips on some upcoming projects and some tools that you can use to crush it in NFT land. We're furthering the education of all things NFT with some fun games and some fun opportunities. So stick around and check out my interview with Bry DeSanto. stoked to to learn more about you and I'll, I'll record some cool intro leading into this where i hype you up and everything but you need no hype because the bride de santo is growing in nft land so i needed to know right out of the gate how did you get into nfts and who the hell are you i'm brian de santo this is me this is my face if, if i haven't been doxxed yet here you go i usually yell on the wolf game twitter spaces every tuesday but um I got into NFTs about 16 months ago. It was the end of 2020, and it was sort of the top shot beta period. Um, I grew up, you know, this, I feel like the story is so cliche, but I grew up a huge sports card collector, big into Pokemon cards, played a ton of video games from Counter Strike to World of Warcraft to Final Fantasy XI. So the, the collector in me, the, the fantasy football player in me, the gamer in me, um, I think naturally gravitated towards everything that I think the NFT space has to offer. But professionally, I've run a digital marketing agency for brands for the past four years. Um, awesome. And we are very brand focused, but we've always taken a heavy data and analytics um, approach and thought process when it comes to strategy and decision making. So naturally, I think that approach, you know, if you followed me on Twitter at all, especially with respect to Wolf Game, you know, everything I do, I try to make data oriented, data driven. I love tools like IC tools, like Nansen, because it helps add some context and color behind this space that I think otherwise is very gray, very shady, and very difficult to decipher if you haven't been spending, you know, every second of every day involved in it. Well, so you said you, you again, have a day job, you run an agency. How were you able to balance the mixture of what I'll, I'll, I'm speaking from personal, like it gets exciting, especially yeah. when you're into something that's on the verge of blowing up, or there's a lot of money that can be made. How do you balance that with still operating? You know, I think my personal goal this year has been to do my agency and client work as my day job, so to speak, do crypto and NFTs as my side hustle. And that can mean working on it from midnight until 5 a.m. as the space necessitates. But I didn't want to have to feel like I ever needed to pull a single piece of Ethereum or crypto out into fiat this year. And I started earlier in the year, you know, I put about $20,000 of my own money. So I think it was about maybe, I don't know, 10 to 15 Ethereum at the time. That was like my initial NFT investment because I knew the space was very interesting. I wanted to dedicate time to it, but I also didn't want to put so much money in that I felt like I could just throw shit around and be reckless and careless. Um, and that's the base that I've been working off of from day one until today. I haven't loaded up any, you know, any more fiat since day one. Um, and I think, you know, as you've seen and others have seen, the space is intoxicating. It's addicting. It pulls you in and it forces you to want to spend every waking moment thinking about That's it. That's the struggle. So it's the struggle in between having, you know, managing a relationship, managing, you know, an agency and a day job and clients. You know, it's, I think, car carving out enough time to give it the focus it needs. But I think also cutting corners, you know, as as necessitated. So, I mean, I have skipped out on client calls. I have bailed on meetings. I have minted NFTs during meetings, you know, oh, yeah, delegate, same, same. Delegate, delegate as much as possible. But, um, you know, I feel fortunate. I, you know, I'm not my job doesn't necessitate that I be in a workplace, you know, during this crazy COVID time. 
I kind of make my own hours. I can schedule client calls and engagements as needed. So, you know, the name of the game is flexibility and freedom. And I think that's really what I've been finessing uh, for the better part of the last 15, 16 months. No, you're doing it so well. You mentioned that data and that analysis was as a part of the day job. Is that why it came incredibly natural? Because again, the spreadsheets you put out, you've made a calculator for Wolf Game resources for people. And I'll dive in a little bit of some of the other resources we like and use, but you did that yourself. You did that again, not on a website. It's like you were just posting it and letting people use it. So is that because that scratches a creative itch or just you're good at it? Where did it come from that? Because that that gets into the weeds in a good way to, to provide real value for some people like myself who yeah. couldn't do that math. I think it's a combination of things. You know, for me, I don't have much creative talent. I, you know, I can't play music. I'm not an artist, but I am incredibly OCD and anal. And I've always taken pride in my ability to create dope ass spreadsheets. Um, and I think for clients, you know, what one of the things that I think I've been so successful at and what has you know earned me a lot of business and kept a lot of business in the social media web to you know agency world has been the ability to work with data and analytics but articulate them in such a way that the lay person everyday person the creative on a marketing team for instance can understand the takeaways and the insights so I took that approach and that methodology and I said you know what what's really fucking complicated what do people need a lot of help with? And if I was somebody in the space that was invested but didn't have you know, hours to dedicate to this on a daily basis, what would I wanna know and what would I want to be simplified? So I looked at Wolf Game and the first exercise was Risky Game because that was really the first moment in time since you know, we minted where you were asked to make a tough call. And when I analyzed the white paper and the tokenomics, it became very clear to me that a simple math model and spreadsheet could sort of simulate what this game could look like and help people at least make a slightly educated decision. You know, of course there is risk, there is chance, none of these results are guaranteed. But when you ran the numbers and you ran the expected value, you know, the math at least said it's overwhelmingly in favor of play risky game, take that 50, yep. 50 risk, you know, you might come away empty handed, but more times than not, you come out, you know, with a couple hundred thousand wool more than you would have had if you played it safe. Um, of course I played, I ran all the numbers. I ran the predictions. I ran the model. I went two for nine. Right. So I got totally shafted. But the funny thing was, I think when you ran a break even analysis, I netted just as much pouched wool from those two right. wins as if I would have you know, played it safe for all nine. So the math worked out even in a crappy situation. That's incredible. And, and you being able to break that down again is, is part of that talent. That's that literal natural talent that you have that maybe you, you downplay, but I'm gonna upplay the shit out of it because it helps out casual and lower level players like myself <laughs> that I think it is just my opinion. And I'd love to know yours as I lead into some resources that are out there like uh, wolfgame.live and wolfgame.tools. Yeah that I think you've promoted and use yourself possibly even to, to get some of that data. Of but like for the, for those smaller players, aren't we all, anyone that's in it, theoretically, we would want some more players to feel welcome. Is that, is that, do you share that opinion? That is the basis for everything I do, whether it's sharing analysis, it's sharing my insights, it's doing the Twitter spaces. I think as a member of the community and an investor in the project, I think, it is all of our goals as members to educate new users, help onboard them, because it's all about growing the game. You know, this phenomenon can't become a phenomenon and go mainstream if the same 5,000 people, like, it turns into a circle jerk. Like, it right. needs to grow. <laughs> there need to be new minds. There need to be new people that come in and challenge the status quo. And I think that's, you know, where... I see Wolf Game going. You know, right now with Alpha Game and the current state, it's challenging because there are only so many sheep and wolves to go around. Right. And it's really costly. But I think with breeding coming, I'm hoping we get estate expansion. Maybe there are new plots of land that can be minted um, or cultivated in some way. I think look at the Gary V, the AJ, the JMO, the Friends collaboration. I mean, that was such an incredible way to combine two like minded communities bring new users in but the only way those people learn to play and acclimate 
is if we're friendly and we educate. And, you know, BAYC, Cool Cats, Gutter Cats, these original collections of 10K, 3K profile pictures are so easy to grasp. You have a photo of a, an event, it's an NFT, there's some sort of art on it, it has attributes that have varying rarities, and that's more or less the extent of the analysis. When you come into Wolf Game, you know, you have five to 10 NFTs, there's intense game theory, there are risky mechanics, people don't know what to do or where to begin. And I think for me, my approach has always been, if I can help make that onboarding even slightly easier, help you make one fewer decision or make one decision that's easier in black and white, I feel like I've done part of my job as, you know, just a small sliver of this community. And that's kind of been my ethos this whole time. You're amazing for it. And, and that's the, the love is real that I think the community has for you. You see it in who shows up on the Twitter spaces, who's liking and kind of sharing your content and your followership has grown as a result. Would you recommend that people interested in, in the game, whether they own one or two or none right now, would you recommend they use things like Wolfgame.tools or Wolfgame.live? Do you think it's too much for in? Like, where's a good starting point for somebody? I am of the mindset that data, data, information is the most important thing any of us can have access to. And I have to give so much credit to Wolf Games community for building tools that are free for everybody to access and really intuitive. You know, you look at wolfgame.live that Scarly Worley built, that was the first tool. And it created this dashboard that very succinctly and concisely shared floor prices of the various assets, which if you think about any complex collection, look at something like Pixel Vault that has, you know, a whole collection of different assets, it's impossible to keep track of all of the different pieces in the ecosystem. And Scarly helped make that directory and that glossary incredibly simple, simple to access. And then you had someone like Yeah Yeah who built Wolfgame.tools that has all of these advanced metrics, everything from floor prices to historic prices to you know detailed analytics on Alpha Game, um, you know, and what you could expect by staking with different teams. Um, or maybe if you're a prospective investor and you want to buy a wool pouch, and there's a rundown of all of the available pouches with you know, the highest discount rates, the most unclaimed wool, and it's just creating visibility that people can use to make decisions. Um, and then there's Wolf Brain. You know, Wolf Brain is a calculator that basically made any of the work I did obsolete, which is amazing because it's this you know real time calculator where you can plug in your wool, your sheep, your wolves with the time period that you've staked, and it'll give you a pretty accurate range of you know what size wool pouch you can expect to receive um, at any moment. And I think you know having these tools at your disposal as a new player just clarifies, I think, a space that otherwise would have been very gray, very ambiguous, and frankly, really biased because you have sure. all of these alphas and these team players that are vying for people's attention and assets. I think it's tough to get a straight answer from anybody in the community. Oh, oh for sure. Which is why I think yourself, Scarly Warley, Wolfbrain, and, and yeah, yeah, as examples of people that were being really transparent about the data without a slant. And, and no offense to the A8s, they should be slanting. That's their yeah. job right now. They're literally doing that to win. So moving into that, we're, we're in this game before the game, right? So you've you've hypothesized, I think, that March is when the full game might come out. Is I thought maybe a tweet came from you on that, possibly. Is that what you still think? And my, my instinct has said mid-March all along. We got this sort of stealth website update this week where yes. Shepard specifically wrote the game would come in the first half of 2022. My gut tells me that's a signal that they might need a little bit more time, a little more time. but his precedent has always been to sort of under promise and over deliver. So I yep. think if I'm, you know, reading the tea leaves, considering that, I think it'll probably be a little bit later than anticipated, but I think we see a launch sometime in April. If I had to okay. guess put money on it, like April 15th, that time frame, like a little tax, little tax refund boom, where you can get some new players in would be exactly. very, very, very juicy. Exactly. Do you think that the new, the the version two, the full game, if you will, or I shouldn't even say full game because everything that leads up to this, there might be add-ons beyond that and things that come out of it. Do you think that the gameplay itself will stay 
decision based or do you think there's going to be some sort of interaction with the interface like a tr traditional video game you know i think of it as a living breathing collective board game i think there will be a ui that helps you visualize your pieces in your setup but i think at the core this is going to be a strategy game and a product and a project that's centered around game theory and not just what the individual decides but every decision will have a chain reaction and be influenced by what the collective does we saw it with risky game and the yields and the payouts based on what the collective decided we're seeing it with alpha game i think full game will be no different except on steroids with i think about 30 to 40 different attributes so i could see a ui like farmville where you know you have your land plots you have you know your farmers your sheep that you position in certain areas I could see building structures that you maybe use wool, you burn for structures and things like that. And there's a visualized setup. But I think at the core, it's a game that's a series of decisions. And those decisions, you know, compound and come up with some end result. Awesome. I just, just two more quick questions. Uh, any, is there, is there any crazy theories on Wolf Game that stand out to you? You know, I think my, I have been, the chief like leader of the farmer alliance. I, I feel like I've been sounding the horn about farmers, farmers, farmers. I think they are the most intriguing asset in Wolf game. I think outside of wool itself, I think they are the most undervalued asset in Wolf game. Because if you think about asset appreciation, Wolf game has shown an incredible propensity to be hypersensitive to utility news and just mentions. Shepard puts one tweet out that just says the word wool and the price spikes by 10%. I think when I look at farmers and how multi multifaceted they'll be, you get the fact that their profile pictures, which has been the meta in NFTs for the better part of a year. And with Wolf Game, it's been utility, utility, utility first. There's been no PFP angle. I think with farmers coming in, forget what they do and what powers they have. I think in terms of visuals to represent the community, they will have mass appeal just from that aspect alone. And the upside that maybe you pull a zombie farmer or an alien farmer or a gold farmer, or maybe a, a one of one shepherd, um, I think is there on the table. Um, and then just in terms of abilities and powers, you know, I could see a world where farmers specialize in certain resources land have certain resource allocations and attributes and there's a whole pairing angle you know you need to find farmers that specialize in the crops that certain plots of land are rich in um, and i think there will be a lot of trading that goes on and the other piece is scarcity you know when you look at the language on the website Everything is talked about in terms of Genesis. You have 20,000 Genesis parcels of land. You have generation zero and one sheep and wolves. Farmers have always just been mentioned as farmers. There's no mention of future generations, of Genesis assets. All signs to me point towards us never getting more than about 11,000 farmers. And I think honestly, because we shunned Shepherd's Mint, I think yep. he is fucking pissed and he is yeah. hell bent on keeping these things scarce, delivering value and make maybe making people regret the fact that they didn't mint these when they had the chance. Um, so if I'm, you know, accumulating and I'm looking at, you know, what pieces are going to appreciate the most, again, not financial advice, but they are the most scarce asset in the game. You look at top land holders and how deficient they are in farmer holdings. That for me is the alpha that I'm looking at and the most excited about personally. Yeah. And I think people, people are confused somewhat by it just because it's not revealed yet. It doesn't show anything. And maybe that confuses them. Certainly a new player would see that and be like, oh, that's not finished. I don't know if I need to get that. So I think that barrier to entry kind of plays there. Of course. So you, you've dropped some massive alpha here with me and I appreciate that. So I'll just close with, is there any, anybody you recommend or projects, no, not financial advice that you're looking at that could obviously wolf game, right? We're saying that we know that wool is an easy entry point. I literally helped a friend get some wool just so they could be just a taste yeah. of what's going on on Uniswap. And like you said earlier, the other assets do have a, a, a different cost that's at another tier, but are there other projects that 
you've seen that would be something that either intrigued you or you think could help people come into this whatever the hell we're in nft land and maybe then they'd be ready to understand what's going on with with wolf game maybe you know i i started in this space early on as a flipper i was minting everything under the sun trying to dabble in every project i could just because i think when you're new that's just sort of what the space demands it's about getting reps and i think getting that experience at this point in my nft career i am all about high conviction plays and yep. dropping big bets big bombs on those projects and the reality is there are more scams than ever there are more rug pulls than ever there are more crap projects than ever. I mean, you could have minted a project in 2021 and flipped basically anything for profit, you know, if you if you didn't just like tune out and and not pay attention. It was so easy to hit success. Now, you know, and it's it's boring, but it's Wolf Game, it's Pixel Vault. I think that ecosystem is still wildly undervalued. And I think it's play to earn, you know, for me, I think the PFP collectibles were a great meta last year. But personally, as a data junkie, as a gamer, as someone who loves board games, as someone who loves Survivor, I want to be engaged with projects that make me think. They make me challenge the decisions I'm making and make me make hard decisions. Like I don't want to just buy an NFT, hold it and flip it. You know, that to me is not interesting. And I think yeah. that's the root of where you know the wolf game love love comes from. But I think if there are undervalued projects that are in that same vein to look at, I think Pixel Vault. You know, you look at Meta Hero Universe. You look at the Planet tokens. You look at Meta Heroes themselves. I think the planets are a great entry point because we know those sidekicks are coming. Mint Pass twos, which will generate the POW tokens passively which will be used in their play to earn game in about four months. I think it's a good entry point and a good way to get in early. Um, I think Nifty League is really interesting. It's sort of taking the Nintendo model where they have a play to earn Super Smash Bros style game. Um, they have a Mario Kart style game coming out soon that I think, you know, sort of scratches that Nintendo itch and produces and presents a game that, you know, might actually be fun to play with friends and take some of the emphasis off, you know, just earning as many tokens as you can. Um, I think Look Labs, the 420 game that just released, you know, it was a, if you owned Wolf Game, you got access to their green list. Um, I, you did know, do that. Is, I did, I did do that it. myself. <laughs> I think it is very nascent. It is very early. I think it's very niche. You know, I'm still kind of feeling out the potential, but I think the tokenomics are interesting. I think the breeding mechanics are novel and certainly fascinating. And if you're somebody who's a part of weed culture, um, I get the sense that it's probably a project that you might be pretty interested in because I know IRL collabs, you know, you could think about MedMen, for instance, you know, if you're a big weed smoker, or, you know, maybe there's something there for you. Um, and I think the last one, you know, that I I look at and I like that I, I mentioned Nifty League, right? Was the other yeah, one? Yeah, I got Pixel Vault, Nifty League, Look Labs. Yeah, the last one, you know, and I know they're having a tough time this week with their launch, but Cool Pets, it's the Cool Cats, you know, Gen Two collection. Sure. They're effectively, you know, creating a Tamagotchi like game using their milk token. Um, I think buying FUD is like blood in the water. I think, yeah. you know, we saw it with the Beanie, the Beanie Saga and Wolf Game prices cratered and came back up. Um, Pixel had some of that. But I think Cool Cats have proven they are a blue chip project in the space. They are an OG project. I think if you want access to a gaming project and play to earn, that probably will go mainstream and I think has the best chance to capture a wide Coinbase style audience. I think Cool Pets and the Milk Token are an interesting one to look at. For sure. For sure. I can't thank you enough for spending time with me here. Obviously, I'm going to get this edited, get things together, probably even chop some clips just because you said some just juicy stuff that I think my goal is maybe similar to yours. I'd love to help onboard new people. Like, I know I just put up a YouTube channel as a whim. I did that. And then people start asking questions about mint price and floor price. I started helping people with that. I'm on a lower level, but uh, I can't thank you enough for continuing that assistance out there. And I thank you. I mean, you are doing the same thing. We need content creators are the lifeblood of this ecosystem. They're the lifeblood of communities. And I think yourself, 
someone like Neil Bottle, Layer Cake that are doing a weekly YouTube show as well. You are the people that will help grow the game, help share information that's easy to digest, and frankly, keep this entertaining. So I thank you so much for having me on. This has been a blast to talk about. I, I so appreciate the platform, um, and I'm pumped to keep chopping it up in the Discord and on Twitter. This has been fun. Absolutely. Absolutely. So have a great rest of your time in, in, in PR and, and safe travels back to Brooklyn. I'll see you on the Twitter. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy the warmth in Orlando. And I look forward to Wool Event 2. I think it's uh, right. imminent. Same. Maybe we'll get it tonight. I think so. I think so. Later, Craig. Have a good one, man. You too. Oh, we had fun. We talked about Wolf Game. We talked about Pixel Vault, Look Labs, Nifty League. I got to look into that one myself. Highlighted some amazing individuals in the Wolf Game community like Wolf Brain, Scarly Warly, Yaya, and of course, Brian himself. Amazing resources for information of where you can learn more about Wolf Game and some other cool NFT projects. If you've got questions about projects, drop a comment right here on this video. Hit me up, let me know. We'll figure out what the next videos will be. See you next time.